Welcome to Graham Games. My name is Graham. This is a game. Miss Steve is just really looking for some attention. This is Acolyte of the Altar. I've been keeping an eye on this one for a while now. I'm very excited that there's a public demo. It has like Hearthstone gameplay with the scale and like epicness of Shadows of the Colossus. These massive monsters that are represented in really cool ways that you normally don't get to like witness in a card game. Well, there's floofs everywhere. Gross, Misty. Squawking Bard. Hey, over here, you're an acolyte, right? I'm a beast. That means we fight. I wonder why. Oh, you look positively flimsy. Let me give you some tips so you don't embarrass yourself. Phew. Look at this cute little guy. Why don't you right click on him to check him out? He's a tiny disciple. It looks like he's a creature. See how he has a yellow attack gem. That's how much damage he does when he attacks. Creatures have health. The red one is health. It's how much damage he can take. And the blue one is mana. It's how much it costs to play. Mana pool in the bottom. And have some extra mana I stole from the last Acolyte. Use it to play your mana pool koi next. So also like something like Magic the Gathering, I guess. But like Hearthstone is what first came to mind for me. Play. Spend all remaining mana to gain plus one plus one for each mana spent to the, his, like, attack and health, I'm guessing. Oh, God. Oh, he, the, okay. The, he had added more than I realized. Ah, shoot. He ate all your mana. Most cards have special effects. Be sure to read them. Creatures summoned closest to your face. <laughs> Wait. Notice creatures are summoned closest to your face. Oh, so, like, just, like, left to right. Like, this is my face. They get summoned on that side. That was, like, less clear than it could have been. Well, you're out of mana. Let's see what you got. Smack me hard. Okay. <laughs> Smack the squawker. Drag your creatures into the attack row, then click the attack button. Is that not what that that is? This is the attack button? Mm -hmm. They can't attack the turn they are summoned. Ah, they're sick with summoning sickness and can't attack. That means you have to wait till your next turn. Mm, seems like it would have been easier to just introduce that concept rather than like being like attack. Oh wait, you can't <laughs> My piercing gaze messed you up good. Did you see the life plummet from my special ability? Okay for real this time pick up your creature by dragging them your mouse can carry multiple creatures at once So if I oh, okay, it like scoops them up uh, So pick them up and then what did you want me to do with them? I believe you can attack him directly, but I think you can also... Oh, so that just moved them up to attack mode. Now click the attack button, and the attack button is kind of in, ro in line with the attack row. As turns go by, a beast's rage increases. This unlocks our latent power via new abilities. End your turn again so I can show you my real power. So he has the piercing gaze. I really like all the effects and everything that are being applied, like the interaction of those like blinking eyes showing that. Um, this tutorial's like maybe a little bit tonally at odds with what I've come to expect from the game. Like it seems kind of silly. <laughs> My powerful slash destroyed your creature. Take that, acolyte. Most abilities strike from left to right. It's like reading a book, okay? That makes sense. I had the arrow there to remind you. Well, that's all the advice I have. We can stop fighting now, right? That was such a quick and simple tutorial that I almost wish they went more of like, can you remember like flash game tutorials? It was like a singular screen. And it was like, this is attacks. Uh, you have mana. These guys have health. You'll figure it out. And it just like simple. Like this is, there's like more to this than I think the game actually is like, in my opinion, asking for. But you always got to think about people who like aren't familiar with this genre of game. So, I, I just, I fight, fight again, just keep attacking him. I, I guess I also have this too, so I can summon the Chanting Cultist. It's a forbidden card. They cost one extra mana. Your primary patron gives you one each combat start. Uh, your primary patron is like, I think, who you're choosing to play as. Uh, like, instead of choosing a different character, you're choosing the god you worship. It's something like that. And when you have borrowed life, damage done to you is instead absorbed by your borrowed life. That is quite interesting as well. Um, can I can I end attack phase? Ah, uh, no, I've I've entered that. That's that was my bad. 
Uh, I think I did that like out of order. That's fine. I was just trying to like get through it anyways. So these are the primary patrons. Or you have you have a greater and you have the lesser. So uh, the Ravagers govern a primitive industrial society by physical strength and ferocity. With armies of imps captained by mis mountainous champions, they take down beasts before they can react. Embracing reason and shunning their emotions and instincts, empiricists bargain with transcendental horrors in exchange for knowledge. They often stall for time until they can summon these beings to annihilate their foes. And the Sylvans locked in the demo. Okay. Uh, and then the lesser... Oh, the lesser are the same, actually. So I will choose the Ravagers as my greater and the Empiricists as my lesser. And let's go with that. I think that should craft my deck for me. Choose a gift, Acolyte. Ancient Gong, your spells that cost two are less or less trigger twice. Start combat at two mana, gain one borrowed life every turn. That seems very strong. I don't know what the six versus two is. Like, I think I might be asking for a harder, yeah, spiritual burden. So that's a better card, but I think I've made it harder. The Marrow Wastes, that's cool. Also, God, oh, the creature designs of this are just amazing. The Fates, these look so cool. So that is my uh, borrowed life that I have, and then that's my regular life. I have the two mana, so I can summon half of these, most of these. Crumbling Gargoyle, end of turn, I lose one attack. So he starts really strong and gets crappier. And the Tiny Disciple. When you loot a new card, a Tiny Disciple is sadly replaced from your deck. It's, it's not just replaced, it's done so regretfully. We didn't want to have to do it, but that's what must be done. Well, he is quite, like, weak. Like, if he gets hit once or anything, that's it. So maybe summoning him first is the wrong call, because if he does, like, anything, he just will kill this. Oh god, I didn't expect him to open up so many things at once there. So spin. Summon a length of thread until your board is full the work of the fate's hands like it's just gonna it's gonna fill my side of the board or his measure kill all length of thread each one killed increases measures count by one counter his counter by one does that just mean his attack because that would scale up like crazy and cut deal one for every three tokens of measure oh so the measure isn't actually anything. The cut, so the spin feeds into measure and measure feeds into cut, I think. An ability with overkill will deal leftover damage to you directly. Oh shit, so if he, um, he only has the one health. If this had two, it would do one to the golem and one to me. Well, I don't want that. <laughs> uh, what can, what can I do? Uh, what are my options? Let's get, um... Let's get a tiny disciple on the board. I can move you up. And I think I can attack. Like, I can destroy his summon thread thing. I think, I think, I think I can attack those. They have their own health. Obviously, I attacked the fates themselves. And so I'm not sure exactly how that feeds in. Maybe it's just by, by the time I've done a certain number of damage. Oh god, oh no, <laughs> okay. So it summoned all of that thread to fill my side of the board. He cut it all, so he has a measure of four, which means deal one for every three tokens of measure. For every three. Oh, so his overkill is one. All right, not the craziest. Uh, but that is indicating that Cut is planning to attack him. It wouldn't even kill him currently in its current state, so I'm not totally screwed. Frontline, the lamb. Units with frontline go to the leftmost position of the board. Start of the turn, restore one health to me. Does me mean the lamb in that context, or does it mean my, my character? I don't actually know. I'm debating, do I just throw the koi down with all of, uh, spend all that mana? I think that would be the right time to do it. I feel good about that, I think. So I will attack with my tiny disciple. Because next turn I will have five mana and I can think about doing the Mastodon. So I, before I have that much, I might as well just get something else. Although maybe I should be focusing harder on just getting things on the board. Low cost, 
just fill it all up as much as possible because now all of a sudden cut does two so it's like notably riskier very suddenly uh let's see the mastodon mahout mahout i hop on target creature raising my stats by theirs and death resummon my mount so like if i played him on top of the on top of him <laughs> yeah okay he gains a lot uh he's gonna have to take two damage but like oh they can't attack the same turn of course of course so i'm gonna get filled with threat again so like that was just too intriguing i had to try it even though it was very clearly a bad call from the perspective of like i'm giving him so much opportunity to raise his stats by a lot uh summon gain two borrowed life honestly i should just be trying to fill in the board at this point so let me just uh get things out here and uh, i'll place i'll place the lamb as well oh i wonder if they always attack the leftmost and so i've i've put the lamb in a position to be that's the front line that's the nature of it you're you're gonna get wailed on the, the measuring, the cutting, all that, the way that's all like weighing and layering in the things is really cool. So now let me play all of these. He'll have the extra mana boost. And can I just like put everyone? Oh yeah, yeah, that was the... They can't attack the same turn they're summoned. Yeah, but the, the, the way that you swipe past to gather up all your cards uh, is really good. I'm, I'm actually super grateful that they have something like that in place. Ah, dang it. I'm going to lose my Mastodon already. But I've regained the mount, which is c quite cool. It's super duper weak. Not at all useful here for me. Uh, oh, there is room. There is room for that card still. And now I can put all of them up front there. I think that w this has been a very <laughs> uh, unoptimized battle. But I, I feel like I was just kind of getting the swing of things a little bit there. I know I breezed past the tutorial, but it kind of like, it, it, it felt like it was, maybe, maybe you guys would disagree, but it kind of felt like it was more than there needed to be. Like, it's adding this goofy, silly, squawky character, and it was like, like over explaining things. It was like, you probably could have just thrown me into a battle and like, I don't know. I feel like they could have been a little bit more streamlined, even though it was already very, very short. But like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I'm complaining about things. It was a short tutorial. Uh, complain, uh, claim your reward. Complain, I'm complaining. Complain my reward. Lady of the Pact. Discard your lowest cost creature. I gain their stats. That's, like, fine, I guess. I, um... But then why wouldn't I just play my lowest cost creature? <laughs> uh, Winged Fury. Does that, when they don't have art like that, maybe that's just placeholder. There's no art for it yet. Grant me attack equal to the number of other creatures you have. That's quite cool, but it's expensive as heck. And another crumbling for, for a cost of five beetles I could re-roll, but I don't have that. I'll grab a Lady of the Pact, even though I don't really quite understand it. Offering Harvested along that map there. Don't know what that means. The Angler. So, the Castmaster. <laughs> I've been watching a lot of Taskmaster recently, so I really just, like, triggered my brain a little bit. Lit, lit something up. Deal three to a random creature every time a spell is cast. I don't even know if any of those are are count as spells. Like, summon, frontline, end of turn. Like, those don't read as spells to me. And he has these other three things that will start emerging deeper into the battle we get. Uh, so I'm going to get the crumbling uh, golem on the board. Useless the first turn. But then, you know, he should just keep getting stronger. Oh, dang. So everything else just opened. Oh, that's what the little marker meant. It's showing you how many turns before that thing opens. Okay, lots to learn all of a sudden. The lantern lure. And, uh... On death, grant neighboring creatures minus one attack, deal two direct damage to you. The the you and the me and things like that get a little a little confusing, maybe. Uh, deal one. He's just going to poke me really hard? I don't know what that has to do with fishing. <laughs> uh, let's see. I could, I could just add more borrowed life. Discard your lowest cost card. I gain their stats. Like, that, that, that would be... 
Ooh. Here is a, a thought. So let me see. I, I, I can get both of these on the board. And now I won't be able to play this one because I don't have enough mana. But, like, you could you could realistically have your lowest cost card that's left over for you be relatively expensive. It's never It probably is never going to be crazy. But the later in the game you get, the more mana you have, the more things you can play around with. The effects of the skills are really cool. That did not work how I thought it would. Oh, shit. So, okay. So he played that for me. It doesn't attack. It has one health. And when it dies now on my side, it'll make my stuff weaker and deal direct damage to me. I'm quite certain. Deal one to all creatures. Okay, so he's just getting ready to kill everything. Every time a spell is cast. I, I Yeah, I, I haven't been casting. Cast, casting a fishing line, casting spells. I didn't really think about that initially and, and it's quite funny. Here we go. Here's here's how here's how we do it. So we play the lamb on the board. This now is one. Yeah, so when I play this, I will discard the lowest cost card, which was actually a very strong card. There it is. That's where the the lady of the pact works. <laughs> so, you're immediately wait, did it say to the right to the left? Or just neighboring. Neighboring creatures. Ooh, they're both going to lose attack on that one. That stinks. I don't think it does anything to put him in the front like that to attack. I don't think so. Oh, and the skull means it will die. The knife just means it will take damage. The skull means it will die this turn. The effects. The effects are unreal. I really love I love that. And the, the cool... The music is very atmospheric. Like... That's that's my issue with the tutorial. The tutorial in terms of the lessons it's teaching you are fine, but this is like such a grim kind of like setting and like it has those like ethereal qualities and so it's such a strange note to start out on in my opinion. Like it wasn't mysterious and, and didn't have the like that grand scale to it. That's my issue with the tutorial, not the instruction themselves. It felt at odds with what I think feel like the rest of the game is so I feel like that could be that could be worked but it, it was short and that that was totally effective so I'm gonna lose my disciple oh crap he's playing another one of these already I actually don't know how often he's able to do that I'm glad he, he I'm glad he can't swipe it the same turn he plays it like if he can then um, then I, I'm just haven't seen that happen I I'll learn. I'll remember eventually. <laughs> so I, I've stacked up a lot of borrowed life, so I'm actually not that concerned. He, I, I've done quite a lot of damage here. He's, he's injured as can be. I don't have any uh, space left, so everything can just go up top there. I don't think if the over, I don't think overkill does anything for me. I like that it has like a death animation and all the souls like going out and everything. There's a lot of care put into those extra details. It, it's so smart, actually, rather than, I don't know, modeling or drawing this big thing that's the size of the screen. Just have these, like, representations of it. I think it's so smart. Frontline and charge. Creatures are ready to attack the turn they're played. They still need to attack, uh, need the attack token, though, so save it for them. I don't entirely understand the attack token system. Frontline target creature. Uh, well, frontline, frontline target creature. In my, the, the, it seems like it's the exact same thing. Oh, no, no, no. This is a skill. So I would move a card to the frontline or give them the frontline quality. And from ashes, dominate one. Cards with dominate randomly kill your own creatures before entering play. Ravagers love to show off their strength. Summon two beast tormentors. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Let's try it. Why not? Probably that's a really strong monster, right? And I'll just play it when I feel that I need to or whatever. So I don't entirely know how these symbols play into things here. Maybe that's just like a s associated lore stuff. Dice game. You hear boisterous laughter and the rattle of dice in a cup or lost dog, a ball of fur, cowers before a beast. Dice game. 
I have no I, I don't know what this is gonna okay <laughs> a group of nomadic acolytes are playing dice as bets are made a small pile of golden beetles builds up in the center anyone can take the pot but to do so is to exit the game few do as most value the game more than their wealth just take the pot go for broke gain 20 to 60 beetles or lose 20 to 30 uh, but I I only have 10 so honestly go for broke oh I can't because I don't have enough um, oh so both will happen it's not either or so you could end up losing more than you gain gotcha but I, in this instance I can just take the pot black ink adds a card with customizable customizable stats to your hand I can just make it what I want and mini jelly when a creature dies deal one to the enemy this is cool this is a cool idea for like a relic system that it makes the game harder uh, <laughs> let's oh, dealing one damage isn't that much let's try the customizable thing the fading forest I don't know if the map, the way the map is being traced out, is doing a great job of making me feel like I'm moving from a new area to the next. Like, I really like the way the board just changed, actually, to represent that. I absolutely love that. We're going to have themed enemies, this uncovered gold cap. Totally love that. Give you a sense of space in this, this world. But I want the presentation of the map to be a little bit more integrated, show the path being traveled, maybe even have like a random element to that, zoom in or whatever to show me the forest. I don't know, because right now, this is very cool. It feels kind of detached from that map. That's my, that's my read on that. So, ooh, Ink Drinker. So this is the, this is the customizable stats one, isn't it? Play deals one damage, inspect me while in hand, then click edit. Uh, it's, Oh, what? Uh, 100. <laughs> no, presumably, yeah, yeah, but for each thing that I change. That totally, that's like kind of how I thought it would work. Uh, I can change the health and the attack. Poop. Nope, I can't change the text. It's kind of weird that it even lets me. <laughs> uh, I could just add borrowed life right away. Getting the crumbling go golem on the board. See, that's the attack token. Uh, and maybe that just represents that I have not attacked yet. And that'll start playing into certain cards that they get to attack without spending the token. Like, we'll see how that comes together. The befuddling spores. I really like the art on that one. Flip the health and attack of a creature. You cannot see enemy intents this fight. Ever? Ever. Not just for that skill. And Fungi Flurry, deal two damage. Fungi Flurry will trigger two to three times. Oh my god, it's going to deal so much damage. Uh, <laughs> that's not great for me. I, I want some borrowed ass life on, on the, the map here, please. And you know what? Let's get the Koi on the board. He's not going to get a huge boost or anything, but I kind of want to just start attacking. Because not being able to read his intents and attacking that often... <laughs> Those effects are amazing. Yeah, like I kind of just... It's going to start messing me up. I just got to get things on the board and start attacking. Ooh, there's my, my two like relics in the bottom left there. And wind up punch. If I took no damage last turn... Okay, again, you, me, I. I, I need context. I, I meaning the gold cap, deal three damage to you. I don't, it's, it's from the creature's perspective. Am I supposed to read it from mine or from his? I don't, I, I, there's nothing helping me to understand that. You have to say, if the beast, if the player, or like color code it or something, use an icon maybe if you want to keep the f sensation that like the gold cap is speaking or, or something. But like, as it is written, I don't know how to interpret that. And I'm going to forget consistently. If I took no damage, deal three to me. So I'm going to see if that, when that triggers, but like, it's making me think it through to a degree that isn't, isn't necessary. So I think what I want to do here is I want to, oh no, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to click the edit. Uh, I didn't realize you could just click on something without dragging it to play it. Like if I just, if I literally just click 
Because I didn't even work that time. Uh, I, I, like, don't understand how I summoned that on accident even. Maybe I clicked and dragged a millimeter and it counted that as a drag. But I wanted to edit the ink drinkers. That was a, a humongous waste. That's a, that's a shame. It's like 90% my fault, 10% the games. That's how I'm, that's how I'm going to delineate that. Uh, well, it flipped the attack and health, but I didn't even really get to see the consequence of that because it just got melted immediately after anyways. I guess that's less scary, actually, when they those two things are even. There's nothing actually to be swapped there. So, do I play that now? Let I'm, I'm just going to get other things on the board. That's, I'm setting that as a priority this turn, and I'll worry about playing the mounted card, depending on what remains on the board after, but... I uh, see he just swapped the attack and defense of the ink drinker, so that didn't matter at all. And that triggered just enough to take that guy out. It's kinda... I was a little bit worried that might happen that way. So. I will... I'll, I'll, I'll mount up on that in case re-summoning re-triggers its ability, because then I would gain more borrowed life through that. Um, so he took damage. And he did not deal three damage after that. Whereas I have not been taking damage. So in this, when it says I and you, I must be from the perspective of the gold cap. You must mean me. It only just makes me think of the, the Simpsons Smokey the Bear gag. <laughs> uh, you have selected you referring to me the correct answer is you like that whole i'm not even sure if i'm getting that right but that's stuck with me forever as being like the funniest little bit of wordplay it will mean nothing to anyone who's never seen it if you haven't i insist that you do it's funny that he keeps using the swapping on a character that it doesn't actually affect oh you bastard god it triggered enough times there i potentially did gain the borrowed life on the resummon there actually that I, I think I did which is pretty great <laughs> that does a lot for me I don't know why I was so confident a part of this game was like chopping off limbs and things and then that would stop him from using specific attacks and it seems to have not been a thing at all please ah yes he survived it Ooh, -hoo -hoo. <laughs> dominate one well, I'm gonna risk it. I don't know. I hope he doesn't kill the koi. Yep, of course he killed the koi. But, uh, I mean, those are strong-ish, but uh, I can't do anything with them right now anyways. When play advantage, all enemy rage gauges by advance. All enemy rage gauges. I guess those are the rage gauges. What? He's gonna make the enemy stronger? I should have just kept that koi on the board. Whatever, but I had to learn. I had to learn. <laughs> swap that do not care so he they, he definitely uh, I don't even have to read the intent because he always attacks left to right it seems oh money koi as strong as they can get and that that'll be a killing blow anyways nice okay maybe I can start getting a little quicker but like each new battle you have quite a few things to start like thinking through which is is quite cool um, Sword Runner is a front line, grant all creatures one attack. That seems really helpful. <laughs> it's just a Beast Tormentor, I already have my means of getting that. And the Afflicted Nomad. When playing, grant me 1-1 one, one for each infested enemy ability. When you infest an enemy ability, I deal damage equal to my attack. But he does not infest things himself no uh when you infest it yeah i don't actually know each infested it makes it seem like you need to have something that infests and then he builds off of that it builds off of that whatever we're gonna call that thing see the map i i'm, I'm totally into the map um i like that i'm clearly going through the forest and things now but the the map is quite like static i would love to see like there's so much detail going on here i'd love to see a little bit more life in there the yearning woods stomach contents 
decreases by one every other turn. If stomach content reaches 10, it bursts and I die. If it reaches zero, I starve and I die. Okay, so swallow. Deal one. If this kills a creature, I gain three life and increase con stomach contents by one. So he will heal up. He'll fill up his stomach. And again, he will attack. He could heal up, could fill his stomach. Hanger tantrum. If stomach content is less than three, deal eight overkill. Oh my god, if it starts to deplete at all. Ah. Uh, because if it entirety three, two, one, like it could take multiple turns to drain the stomach and that could keep happening. And knuckle break. Oh, it has the same uh, art as swipe. So I thought maybe it would be the same. Counter attack, deal two to all attackers. What? This thing is so hard to deal damage to. So if he just... I think it almost makes... Because it's so risky to let his stomach contents drop. How do they drop? How do they drop? Decreases by one every other turn. I think I need to just be summoning crap onto the board. The worst, uh, worst things you've seen. They have, like, no ability to defend themselves. I think that's what I want right now. Just playing that dealt damage, that must be... Uh, one of my things? No? What, what, what is that? Is that your skill or something? Deal one damage. Oh, okay. That's the ink drinker. That that was his skill. I maybe that was randomized because it, it is something to do with uh, a random random card. Uh, so that that might have just been from playing that. Uh, could I? Hey, I can't play that. So I kind of I kind of want these weak ass things on the board. It'll decrease by one. He's gonna kill them. He'll heal up. It doesn't even matter because he's at full health. I think my strategy here is to just feed him the weakest enemies I can. That's my strategy, I think. So, let's, uh, I'll get some borrowed life, that's like a nice buffer for me. Um, the mana pool quite, it'll make it the tiniest bit stronger. But I don't even want to attack, because I don't want to decrease his stomach contents or anything. I just want him to eat my cards here. And, and I don't want the knuckle break. I don't want that coming back at me. Uh, so, let's see. I, I, I'll play you. Because you're nice and weak. I don't even want to play that, that one. Because, again, it'll summon two cards that have three life each. The quicker that I can burst his stomach, the better. It might not always be the best strategy. I might start to realize immediately here that I, I can only summon so many things, so it's <laughs> I'm negative in that regard. See here, I, I think what I'm gonna do. He just sacrificed himself? I think he just sacrificed himself and mounted on himself. <laughs> If he gets killed, will he re-summon himself then? And he's just constantly on the board? That felt like a, a an error or a glitch of some kind that that was allowed. Um, now, you have the, the like least possible health. Let's just get you down there. They're both going to attack that, actually. Ooh, that makes a difference. That does make a difference. Because right now he has three, whereas I would get two things on the board with three each. Hmm. No, I actually just want to stop playing cards. I think because that that this only triggers when his stomach drops. This only triggers when I attack. I, th oh, that does start dropping off. That's right. That's right. That's right. Um, but he's about to kill both of these, like quite easily. <laughs> so I think. He'll kill these two. This is where it gets tricky, because I need enough cards that have that little health. Because I, I forgot that it, it, this decreases by one every turn. Um, yeah, so the, these aren't, like, good for me, necessarily. He'll... He'll kill one, gain one here. And I'm... I'm... Risking being stuck in a little bit of a loop because of that. So I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna I'm gonna mess around with things quite a bit here. I'm gonna force these things to summon. 
he'll get killed, that's fine. Get that on the board as far into my turn as I can to limit the amount of health that it has. And here's where the next step of this strategy is going to start coming into play, actually. Deal two to all attackers. Yes. This is, this is the important next step, actually. Uh, because I want to attack and I want you both to take two damage. Now you're ready to be eaten. There we go. Uh, so I do not think it's worth fighting this thing. I think... By far and away, the safer gameplay is to let its stomach overfill. If it reaches 10, it bursts and I die. It should be dead already. Is, is, right? Am I, am I somehow incorrect in that assessment? Is it because it didn't hit exactly 10? There, he died. I, I feel like that should have triggered right away, but maybe there's some reason why I still need to have a turn to, like, resolve things. But I think it should have died a turn earlier. Grant me attack equal to the number of other creatures you have. Right, yeah, I've seen that. And swarm them, summon two cannon fodder. I don't even really know what cannon fodder is here. Demo completed. In the full game, fight many more beasts, including their unique Arcana variants. Highly replayable, increasingly challenging mode for hardcore players, intro and outro scenes and flavor texts that lore keepers can delve into, and final bosses worthy of even your best deck creations. And click the copy invite link. Link. That's a that's a smart thing to have in, in here, I think. And a bunch of examples of the different creatures and things that you would encounter. Uh, they've been doing great stuff on TikTok. I've seen it come up on TikTok. Very uh, attentive. Kennedy, I believe, is in charge of the, the social media there. Yeah, that, it, it's a cool... It's a, a very cool game. Those battles play out so differently from, like, pretty well any other deck builder. Like, the considerations you're making are just totally different. Even in the demo here, this is, that is a healthy supply of cards. Only a couple placeholders in there. Very, very few. Yeah, Acolyte of the Altar, the demo is available now. The guys can go add that to your wish list. Check it out for yourself. Maybe try out some other strategies. I would definitely recommend it. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.